You're listening to Thrive, where every week we have meaningful conversations with incredible women like you, packed with practical tips and sisterly advice to bring you from a life of simply surviving to thriving. It's personal development for the everyday gal who is done with coasting through her days, done with feeling like she's missing out on the deeper meaning of her own life, and done with mediocrity once and for all. Because it's not enough to simply survive, you deserve to thrive. I'm your host, Erica Gwynn, and I'm ready to thrive together. Here's today's episode. Hi, friends. Deep breath. Welcome back to Thrive. I hope you're ready to breathe easier today and feel a little or maybe even a lot less stressed because Dominice Clifton is here to help a sister out. So what's wild is that I went back through past episodes to see when we've talked about stress before, since it's always a hot topic and rightfully so. And wow, 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 it has been over a year since we've talked about stress. We've got some past popular episodes in today's show notes. We've got five ways to stress less with Dr. Lulu Shemek, also how to trust yourself more and better handle stress with Margie Worrell, and one about managing your productivity without increasing stress levels. But today, we are talking the best ways to physically release stress and i am here for it dominice is the founder of both a mission-driven company and wellness community as well as a coach instructor and new author who knows so much about stress including trauma-induced stress and its impact and connection to our bodies today we talk about the best ways to physically release stress from the body And Dominice even guides us through some super quick breath work to reset your nervous system and feel instant relief right now. Stay tuned through this episode. Drop it five stars if you like what you're listening to. And now welcome, Dominice. Hi, Erica. Thank you so much for having me today. Of course. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy to have you here to talk all things stress and most importantly, how to stress less Mm -hmm. and how to release that stress. So I'm sure all ears are on you immediately since everybody I think can raise their hands confidently and say they would like ideally less stress in their lives. Mm -hmm. Um, So we know you're the founder of a mission-driven company, a wellness community, and you do coaching and teaching and all things to help women really stress. But I want to pass the mic to you so that you can kind of tell us your story and what you do and how you got to where you are now. Yeah, so I will start by sharing where I am now and then giving a bit of my backstory or my evolution and what it took for me to get here. So um, as you said, I'm Dominice Clifton and I'm the founder of Move and Still. And I've been playing around with my elevator pitch lately, but I'm essentially saying that I'm like an education well-being doctor that makes house calls to public schools and organizations that work with youth and community-facing organizations. And typically we see a lot of stress in schools and organizations that are working with young people in the community. There's a lot of secondary trauma. And I really decided to focus and kind of niche down my focus after working in a Baltimore city school for a couple of years and just seeing the amount of stress and burnout that was present in staff and also how that impacted the students that they served. And so my organization really focuses in on coming in and assessing the problems of an organization. So looking at the issues that are causing low staff morale and causing burnout amongst teachers, looking at the issues that are causing overwhelm amongst administrators, and really trying to um, also think about how we can begin to implement more wellness practices to support students. So like improving behavioral and academic challenges. And then we really help to lighten the load and reduce the load of administrators by creating a trauma-informed wellness program that supports the entire school community. And I would say that that piece is something that I believe differentiates what I'm offering from most other programs, because I think that a lot of of wellness programs just focus on the students, and they oftentimes forget about the adults and like the people that are with the students every day. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm really excited about that work. I pivoted and started moving still about a year and a half ago now. Before that, I was working as a nutrition and wellness coach. And I was focusing on working with women, busy women, oftentimes moms. So I know you can relate who wear many hats and, you know, we're also trying to like build businesses and careers and like elevate ourselves. 
And this was around the time that COVID was just starting. So I jumped into coaching um, and as I was working with these women and like we were focused on weight loss and just weight management and ultimately like living healthier lives, I began to see this pattern with my clients where they were all wanting to come to me to lose weight, but they were all extremely stressed out, extremely overwhelmed, like dealing with a lot of anxiety, like normal life anxiety, and then also like global pandemic anxiety and stress. And so as a coach, I realized that I needed to take a step back and really figure out how to support my clients better. And it was like the more that I learned about how to manage stress and how to manage burnout, I had this big aha moment, as Oprah calls it, where I was just like, oh my God, like so many of the things that we are seeing in our societies, when you think about like mental health issues or crime and violence, um, you know, education challenges, community challenges, at the root of so many of those things is unresolved stress and trauma. And it felt like something that I wanted to shout from the mountaintops to everyone because it's something that impacts all of us, usually on a day-to-day basis. And so I decided to move away from working with women and coaching women to really starting this organization to to talk to everyone because we are all impacted by this, although it might look different from person to person. And so, yeah, my focus today is really educating people on how to release stress, like how to release trauma. How do we even know if we're holding on to stress and trauma? Because sometimes we might not even have the awareness And I feel very passionate about this work just because of where I came from and all of the healing that I've had to go through to be here, but also just seeing how, you know, this has impacted people in my family and people that I know, um, and we don't take the time to take care of ourselves. So that's a little bit about me and why I'm so passionate about this work. Um, But I think, again, like it's one of those topics where everyone can tune in and listen and take something from these conversations about how to manage stress and trauma Because especially like as a collective these days with all the things that are happening in our world and in our, you know, in our country, like we are all constantly dealing with so much at one time. You know, that's awesome work that you're doing. And I think you're, gosh, it's, it's wild to me that like stress management is not something that's already built into like school curriculums or something like that. Like, it's incredible how far we all go in our lives or Mm -hmm. maybe not we all, but like. So many of us will go through these systems, not actually learning what things are, how to handle it. And then it's not until we're in adulthood. And then we realize like, oh, been holding on to trauma for, I don't know, decades Mm -hmm. (laughs) where then it's like that huge reality check. So can you, let's start from the beginning, since you mentioned um, something that I think also rings so true for people where you don't even necessarily realize when mm. you are physically holding on to things until you kind of are in a position of getting coaching or therapy or whatever. Can you kind of explain some ways that we do start to identify if we are physically holding on to stress, trauma, whatever, and like mm-hmm. what that might actually look and feel like in our bodies? Yeah. So before I answer this question, and I can't multitask well, so I'm taking notes to come back to your question, but I did want to say, I wanted to comment on something that you said about like how we go through life and we like learn so much and you were all like striving and thriving and trying to do all of these things. But then we get to this point as adults where it's like, I don't know what to do. Like I need help. And that's what I saw with my clients. Like a lot of the women that I was working with had PhDs and master's degrees. So these were like highly educated women, you know what I mean? Like doing well by society standards and like behind, behind the scenes, they were all falling apart. And I could relate to that because as a coach, I was experiencing much of the same. And so while I was doing research to support and help my clients, I was also doing research to support and help myself as I was you know, managing uh, two children at that time, like a newborn and a, a toddler and trying to build a business in the midst of a global pandemic and dealing with quarantine and all of these things. And so, yeah, this isn't something where it's like, oh, I'm exempt from that. You know, if I've reached a certain place in my career or anything like that, like we know that to not be true, like this is, these are really things that impact everyone. So I just wanted to say that. And then the second thing when you, or when you ask the question of how do I identify signs of stress and trauma It definitely shows up different from person to person, but I'll just give some of the things that like how how these things typically um, show up and manifest in our society. So when you look at dis-ease or dis-ease and illness, there is a a statistics that says that 75 to 90 percent of doctor's visits um, are due to stress, like people go in because they're having some sort of issue And then when you start to ask questions or really like pry deeper into what's going on in their lives, a lot of times it's stress. And I've had conversations, you know, with organizations and administrators who have literally said, like, I've had migraines that 
I can't get rid of, or like the entire side of my body has gone numb. And only when I do things to really like bring my stress down, does that go, does that go away? So one of the first things that I would be telling people to look out for is the way that your body starts to physically manifest the things going on. Because a lot of times when you start to go deep and get to the root of the, you know, the, the sickness or the illness or the cold that you can't get rid of that you've been having for months and it goes away and comes back, like our bodies are designed to protect us and to keep us safe and to restore. And they can do that. But when you're constantly under stress, your immune system is essentially weakened and it can't like help you recover. And so if you do have, you know, like I said, some illness or disease or you're constantly sick, like those are things to begin to look for physically. Another thing with the body is if you feel pain. So nine times out of 10, people are going to feel pain in their neck in their chest, in their back, in their shoulders. Like we hold a lot of pain in our upper, like upper body area. So if if you're constantly dealing with pain, maybe lower back problems, I've seen that a lot as well as a yoga instructor. Um, lower back is like the root chakra and that's where we hold a lot of our trauma, like childhood trauma. And so if you have this back pain that you just had for years and you can't figure out how to get rid of it, those are again, like signs that your body is communicating to you that something is off. And I think the challenge with us as a society is that we've gotten used to kind of treating the symptoms, but not really like focusing on the root issue. And so we'll go like, you know, get a heating pad and place it on our back and it brings some temporary ease. Or we might go to the doctor for the migraine and might get a prescription for it and it goes away temporarily, but it always comes back. And so if you're dealing with a pain or an issue that you've been dealing with for a while and you can't figure out like how to get rid of it, my suggestion is like, okay, let me start like digging in and doing some research and investigating like what this could be coming from because everything starts energetically before it manifests physically. So you could literally have childhood trauma that you don't know you're holding on to, or maybe you know that you're holding it, but you don't want to deal with it. And it's like, your body is like telling you like, I'm still holding this. You know what I mean? Um, So those are some of the physical ways. And then when you think about mental health, I would say as someone who has struggled for a really long time with like a low chronic depression and very recently with a very intense depression, mental health issues like, you know, depression and things of that nature are also oftentimes a sign of stress, trauma, things that are unresolved that we need to work through. And so if you're someone who's constantly dealing with burnout or feeling, you know, mentally fatigued and all of these things, like you should definitely take a step back, like focus on how you're feeling. And then maybe sometimes look at not just what you need to do for yourself, but what lifestyle changes you might need to make so that you don't keep coming back and dealing with the same thing over and over. So those are just some of the big things. Like this is a really loaded question. And again, it looks different from person to person, but those are usually some of the like initial things that people might be experiencing and dealing with. And then, sorry, one more thing, a uh, behavioral issue. So if you think about your mood, like, right, as a mom, I know that I need to deal with something or I'm feeling a lot of pressure if I'm irritable, if I'm moody, like all of those things are, you know, like we are intended to be in a state of balance and homeostasis. So anytime we get too far off of that, like it's going to show up in our emotions and how we show up in the world. And so I would think about like how your body feels and how you show up. And that is usually a good indicator if, if you're holding on to something. All so good there. I'm curious too. I mean, if someone is having physical pain in a certain area, like you said, like, don't just slap on a heating pad. Don't just, it's like certain wounds require stitches and you can't just like throw a bandaid on it. But I'm curious if there are some physical sort of things that you can do in the interim. If you first realize something's happening and you're like, okay, got to get to the root of it, but I want to relieve the pain or relieve the tension in the moment are there certain things that are better than others or like certain pressure points or just like Mm. different things that someone can do where they might start to feel some immediate relief at least before they are able to get to the root of the issue? Because I'm sure, especially if it's a trauma induced sort of Mm -hmm. thing that probably can, it can take a hot second to truly work through to feel relief. So what's kind of like the best thing to do in the interim? That's a great question. So two things come to mind. And there's also a third one that I'm going to share. So immediately I'm thinking about yoga and breath work as really helpful modality. So if you're feeling physical, like tightness in your body, again, like as a yoga instructor, I see people complain a lot, especially women, because we hold so much, like complain about like lower back pain. 
if you are experiencing tightness or tension, yoga is the best way to begin to release that stress, that tightness, that tension, that trauma. There's a saying in yoga, the issues are in the tissues. And so it's like when you start to like move the body and stretch the muscles, like you allow your body to almost like bring out the things that you're holding. And so we hold a lot of tension in our hips. We hold a lot of stress in our in the, on our upper backs, like, you know, places like that. And so focusing on yoga postures or asanas that help you to begin to release the body and like open up those spaces that might be tight is a great place to start. And it's also a really helpful place for people that are kind of new to the journey of, you know, healing because we can all connect to our bodies. Like sometimes something like a meditation practice or breath work might be challenging for people because the mind is always going, but most of us can do physical activity and like be okay with that. I love yoga because it really is like a, a one and done where it's like you're moving the body. So you're taking care of that. You're breathing. You're being intentional about your breathing practice. So you're incorporating in breath work or pranayama. And then you're also being very mindful. And so there's that like mindfulness piece that like brings in the meditation. And so I think that yoga is such a beautiful place for people to start. And then if you don't necessarily like if you're in the moment, let's say you're at work and like you're you just got news or you're going into a conversation with your boss and like you're feeling stressed out or anxious about that or whatever, like whatever the case is, if you can't do yoga in that moment, like there's no yoga mat, I can't do yoga. Breath work is always great. And I love breath work as a practice and I advocate for it because we always have access to our breath. And so there are some times where I can literally feel the stress in my body, especially as a mom. I can literally feel the stress in my body. Like my kids are huge, like trigger. They activate me, you know what I mean? Um, and sometimes it just, me being aware of how my body feels, it allows me to just take a step away for a second, like take some deep breaths, like allow my body to release, affirm to myself and my body that I am safe. And then that is also a wonderful release. So those are two really helpful practices. And then when you asked about like, pressure points almost of things that you can do. Another practice is tapping. So it's called uh, emotional freedom technique or EFT, also known as tapping. And tapping is really wonderful because it allows you to tap on specific meridian points throughout the body. And so there's like certain pressure points that you can tap. So you can literally tap on your forehead or like the sides of your forehead and um, you can help to relief, release uh, tension from a headache. You know what I mean? Like, so there are like meridian points that are connected to the nerves and they go to certain organs in the body and certain, like, you know, they're connected to certain parts of the body. So we have so much power in our breath and our body, and we can do so many things on our own if we know about these modalities. And so tapping is another great practice. And there's an app that you can download from the app store and it like guides you through where to tap, what to do, what to say, what to think about. So that's another practice that I have used in the past. I don't use it as much now, but when I was like starting my journey, I started out with tapping amongst a few other things. And it was really helpful for like physical body pain, but also like the the mental kind of things that I wanted to work through as well. Okay. So now I have to ask you no pressure totally, but since you are a teacher in all of this anyway, mm -hmm. uh, can you kind of walk us through like a, a little breath work mm -hmm. practice exercise or tapping or both whatever you feel comfortable doing like in real time now, just so that everyone listening in who's, you know, not driving a car or like <laughs> you're in a position where you can safely do this with us. We can kind of see it in action in real mm -hmm. time and release a little bit of stress right now since, you yes. know, it's, it's very relevant to the episode. <laughs> yeah. And I, um, I didn't think about this before we hit record, but I will, I will do like a very short practice right now, but I can also send you like a short, maybe like three to five minute audio to attach at the end of this um, episode. Oh, and then people amazing. can kind of listen all the way through and then go to the end and have a a, like a little bit of a longer practice um, and yes, then just notice that. how that feels in your body. So there are two practices for folks that are like, you know, maybe new to breath work that I always suggest. The first one, I will just like demo. And then the second one, I'll guide you through a little bit and then you can let me know how it feels. So the first one is a very grounding breath. So this is really good. Like if let's just say you're sitting at work and like you're having overwhelming thoughts or like, you know, you're feeling anxious it's a very grounding breath. So what it does is that you, when you inhale, you're, um, you, when you're inhaling, you're in inhaling through the nose. And then as you exhale, you're exhaling from the mouth, but you're focusing on allowing your exhale to be really long and slow and exaggerated. Because when you do that, you trigger your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest or rest and restore system. And so just really quickly with that one, you can do this for like 10 breaths or two minutes. Like there's, you know, just do it until your body feels better. But that one, you breathe in. And then you exhale very slowly from the mouth. Mm. 
And we can do that one more time. So take a big breath in, breathing into the belly. And then exhaling from the mouth. So you might immediately notice that like my voice is slower, like I'm much more calm because immediately like I'm turning on that like part of my body that allows me to begin to calm down and restore. And if you did this, you or the listeners might also notice that like the shoulders come down, you know, like your body just naturally relaxes. And so you're just feeling kind of like, I like to call it the yoga high. So that's a helpful practice, um, very simple, easy breathing practice that you can do. Again, focusing on a slow exhale. Sometimes I call this the straw breath because when you exhale, if you think about breathing out of a straw, it helps you to really like exaggerate the exhale. Um, and then the second one is, it's very popular. It's called the box breath. And with that one, you take an inhale for four, you hold the breath for four, and then you exhale for four, and then you hold the breath again for four before you take another breath in. And so again, inhale four, hold four, exhale four, hold four. And so we can do that one together, um, maybe taking two breaths. So big breath in, two, three, four, and then hold two, three, four, now release, two, three, four, and then hold, two, three, four, one more time, big breath in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and release, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four. Beautiful. And then just returning to a natural breathing practice. So those are two very easy practices um, that like you can go to as someone that's new to breath work. I'm curious to see like how, how those felt in your body as you were doing them. Oh, I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I did the first one with you and then I started feeling kind of tingly and just mm -hmm. kind of like, it's such a peaceful, wonderful feeling. And it's mm -hmm. amazing to me always how simple, how beautifully simple it is mm -hmm. because we all, we all know how to breathe mm -hmm. and it's just the, the such powerful impact that, that it can have in how you're feeling immediately just by mentally tuning into it and doing it a little bit more intentionally is like, how incredible is that? Like we mm. all have access to this. That is something that every single person can do yeah. immediately for instant sort of relief or something that you just instantly feel, mm -hmm. which is just super, super cool. So yeah. I love that. Thank you for yeah. sharing that with us. You're welcome. I feel inclined to add something because I know you shared your yes, news that, please that do. you're expecting. Um, yeah. Also, is that out? Because if not, you can edit this out. Oh, no, it, it's totally out. <laughs> okay. I was like, I don't know. Okay. So I want Spoiler. to just... <laughs> For the sake of safety and just like being a trauma-informed facilitator, typically breath work is not advised for women that are pregnant if you're doing like a very intense practice. What we just did is typically safe, especially that first one, which is like a straw breath because it is helping to calm the nervous system down, which is really helpful. The second one that we did, the box breath, can also be a safe practice, but when you breathe, like if you're doing a very intense, intense practice, or especially if you're going for longer periods, it can be, uh, it can cause emotional disruption for the baby just because you are like stirring up a lot of emotions in the body and, you know, the baby feels that. And so if like there's emotions coming up, you're, you're feeling, you know, trauma come up like that is the same way that it triggers your body. Your baby will also feel that impact when like those hormones and chemicals are released. And so I just want to note that, that you can breathe, right? Like you can be intentional about taking deep breaths when you're pregnant. And like, again, those two that we did, I, I feel very confident in saying like, do those couple of breaths, couple of minutes, but you wouldn't want to dive into like a 20 minute, like intensive breath practice. If you are pregnant, it is very safe and highly recommended for prenatal and postnatal care, but you just have to be extremely careful and cautious when you are carrying and birthing a little one just to ensure that like you aren't like, you know, triggering their nervous systems also. So I just wanted to put that out there to anyone that's listening that might also be pregnant right now or expecting. Very good intel. <laughs> <laughs> that's important. So thank yeah. you for sharing that too. Would you say that breath work is kind of like the top number one, absolute best way to release stress from the body? Or if you had to narrow it down to like 
a mm. specific practice that is like the best way to physically connect the dots and get it out, what would it be? I have become a fan of breath work. Honestly, it's a practice that I do not every day now because my schedule has shifted a bit, but a couple of times a week, pretty consistently in the morning. And it's also my go-to practice. Like I said, if I'm feeling like aroused and need to calm my body down midday, if I'm like sitting at work and feeling like, oh my God, my to-do list is so overwhelming. I can take a midday break and like do some breath work. Breath work is also wonderful because it helps to put you into like a very meditative state. And so some sometimes we struggle with meditation, like especially for people that are new to the practice, it's hard to really like get your mind to calm down. Not that the goal is to like silence the mind because like as humans, that's not really practical. Um, and sometimes we think when we meditate that that is the goal, but breath work helps to, if you think about like a loud bar, like you're in and everyone's talking and there's, you know, glasses clinking and like plates moving around and maybe there's music in the background, like all of these things are happening. I like to think of breath work as just like when you breathe, like the bar empties out completely. And the beautiful thing about that is not only does it bring you a moment of mindfulness right in the mind, but it also helps you to tune into your intuition. So like drop into the heart space, drop into the body. And I've heard from a lot of people, myself included at one point that like hearing from your intuition can be challenging. And so I also love breath work because not only is it like a physical stress reliever, but it also helps you like emotionally, energetically to really like tune into and hear from yourself a little bit better. Yeah, for sure. What are some other like super practical, super fast ways to kind of hit reset on the nervous system? Because you mentioned, you know, connecting to the baby's nervous system mm -hmm. and the parasympathetic system. So if you really find yourself in the moment of just completely kind of wigging out besides breath work, are there other just really quick, easy, practical ways to kind of hit reset on it all together and physically make some change? Mm, that's a great question. So physical movement is actually the most efficient way to release stress or relief, you know, help the body to feel better. And so going for a walk or doing any sort of physical movement, even if it's literally just like stretching the body, you know what I mean? Like getting the body moving is going to, it's going to help you feel an immediate sense of release. And these are things that we have access to in our, in our day, whether it's our work day or, you know, whatever we're doing. And so taking a break, if you're feeling overwhelmed, taking a five or 10 minute walk around the block, or just literally like going out, grounding, placing your feet on the earth. I also love that one. When I was going through my breathwork certification, I would be breathing like four and five people back, back to back. And energetically, that's a lot because you're like, you're attuning to all of these different emotions. And you know what I mean? Like someone on the call is dealing with depression, depression. And so I'm, I'm taking that in. And so I also love outside of physical movement, going outside when weather permits, um, cause I live on the East coast and barefoot, just placing my feet on the ground. The earth is such a gift that we all take for granted. And there's something just so beautiful about like connecting with the earth, allowing the earth to ground you and just like feeling that like energetic release of, you know, all the things in your body coming out. And so those are just two easy things that you can do. You can pause, you can stretch, you can move your body, like, you know, high knees, like whatever you need to do. Um, and then you can also just ground with the earth. And of course, like if you have more time, you know, to do a more, um, a, a longer physical practice, it's, it's a thing where no one wants to go work out and then you feel so amazing after because like when you when you move the body, you release endorphins, like happy chemicals. And so that's also a really, really helpful way to to help shift the shift the energy in the body and really turn on the uh, parasympathetic nervous system. Absolutely. I also I always find it amazing because sometimes I feel like it's just actually making a shift behaviorally like we get so stuck in our ruts and so stuck in routines and you're mm -hmm. just sitting at your desk all day or whatever and I feel like that ends up being why it makes such a difference mm -hmm. when you allow yourself the opportunity to like get out of your chair and walk around and you're like wow I feel amazing yeah. like it's <laughs> such a small easy thing mm -hmm. but just like shaking it up physically mentally emotionally can have mm -hmm. such an impact and it seems it seems so small but it's like those little powerful tweaks that are that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even, you know, getting sun, like vitamin D is helpful for our, our nervous system and our, our minds. And so there are days where I might just go out and like sit on the porch for a few minutes, you know, like two minutes, like I just need a break. It feels so good. And so if you are somewhere where it's warmer or it gets warmer at some point in the year, taking advantage of that is also helpful. And that's why you have like seasonal depression is such a real thing because the months where we don't have 
as much vitamin D. Like we feel that like the sun is also a really great energy booster. And so that is another like very easy kind of like way that you said to interrupt the day that can also be helpful. So everybody should walk their booties outside and then Mm -hmm. sit down in the sun and do (laughs) some deep breathing. And then we've got check, check, check. We're good to go. (laughs) Yes, exactly. I know you also have a book coming Mm -hmm. out so soon. Um, Might be already out by the time that this episode goes Mm -hmm. live. So can we talk about it? Because it's got seven somatic approaches inside to release, reconnect, and remember your power, Mm -hmm. which what a cool, powerful title. Love that. (laughs) Can you give us kind of like a little sneaky peeky with like a, like a little cliff notes version of the approaches, and then we can make sure we link it in the show notes for everybody to grab a copy. Thank you. So the book is called Hold Space to Heal. And then of course, as you said, the subtitle is focused on those seven somatic approaches, but essentially what it is, is that over the last couple of years of my healing journey, I've tried many different healing modalities. So I'm a one, three projector, which means that I soak up information and I love like experimenting and trying things. And that's just like how I learn and what I love. And so I've done a lot. I've read a lot. I've learned a lot and I've tried a lot of things. And I realized that like, I'm holding on to all of these things, just assuming that everyone knows these things, right? Like I learned them. And so we all know to do these things. And then as I started working with people, I realized that what I now just take as a common practice is not common practice to other people. And what I know to help me release stress and trauma, other people don't know. And so I decided to write this book to share like really powerful somatic practices or body centered or practice practices. That's what somatic practices mean that have helped me over the years and that I continue to use. And so it encompasses breath work, of course, and yoga. It also includes meditation, tapping, physical movement. There's two that I'm blanking on, but there's two other real, oh, I think I said tapping. Um, There's two that I'm blanking on right now, but it includes seven practices that have just been really helpful for me. And I give an explanation of each of them. I give um, stories from other people that have used them. So healing stories, stories from other people that have used them and how they've been helpful to them. And then I also share a lot of my own personal story of how like my healing journey has evolved over the years, because I was holding over two decades of trauma from about eight until my mid thirties. And I didn't even realize like how much I was holding until I started to release, which is the first part of the book. And it was like, once I started to release, it was just like, wow, like I've been holding so much literally from like childhood. And sometimes mentally we can move on from things, but our bodies are still holding on to them. And so I'm writing this book, like sharing these techniques and giving education about stress and trauma, but I'm also sharing my own perspective to say like, hey, this really works. It's very vulnerable. Um, There were times where I was going back and reading things, talking to my soul and being like, are we sure we want to share all of this? Um, But I also have found that in being vulnerable and really just authentic and sharing my story, it has also allowed me to begin to free myself and release those like stories that I've held. And so in many ways, just the writing of this book has been very healing for me because things that I've held and like, you know, things that used to cause me a lot of shame as I've worked through, as I've healed, as I've released, I can now put it out to the world and say, Hey, if I can like be this version of myself now with all of this that I was carrying, like it is possible for anyone. Um, And so that's the book. And I'm really excited. I actually um, am working with my formatter right now to like take it and condense it down from a word doc. And he sent me a preview yesterday and just like scrolling through all of the pages and looking at this book. I was like, wow, like, I can't believe I did this. It's almost as good as like the first time that you hold your baby. I don't know if it's as good, but it's that like irreplaceable feeling of like seeing the thing for the first time and feeling so proud about what you've created. And so I'm shooting to have, I don't know when this is going to air, but it will be coming out by the end of Q2. So by the end of June, and if it's not ready, I will definitely follow up with you so that you can like go back and link it later. But I'm so excited about the book. Thank you for asking about it. Oh yeah. I think timing will align. I think the stars will align here with timing. (laughs) Um, And from one author to another, I totally feel you. It is literally like birthing a baby. It's like Mm. the process. Sometimes it takes even longer than the process to make a baby. So (laughs) it's wild. Well, to get things wrapped up, Dominiz, I want to ask you, what does thrive mean to you and how do you strive to Mm. thrive in your everyday life? What's coming up for me right now is thriving means showing up as my most authentic self. So for a long time, thriving for me went over achieving and over accomplishing and constantly burning out to achieve this like high level perfectionist state that was just like every time I got there, I like moved the bar. You know what I mean? And so I was always like reaching and going for the shiny object. And very recently, like very recently in my journey, have I just 
been like, I'm just going to be okay with like showing up as I am, not over preparing for stuff, like just being my authentic self. And so authenticity for me, like being okay with me and like loving myself and not being so concerned about what other people think, because I feel good because I've done the work that's thriving for me. And I think that when you can show up from that place and really just show people who you are, and it's like kind of a take it or leave it situation, you're going to thrive because you're going to attract and magnetize the people to you that are meant for you. And then everyone else, like doesn't matter. (laughs) Thank you again so much for taking the time to join us today. Just want to get things wrapped up by asking um, where everybody can find you online to make sure that everyone knows where they can connect with you more. We'll have a copy of your book to order in the show notes and all of that jazz. But before we transition to the audio recording that you are sending our way, tell Mm -hmm. everyone how to connect. Yes. So I am most active on Instagram and LinkedIn and I'm Dominice R. Clifton in both of those spaces. And my name is really long to spell. So y'all can find that in the show notes. Um, And then outside of that, I have a newsletter that I send out weekly that shares stress management tips, like just wellness tips for women. And so if anyone is interested in that, you can visit my website at movexstill.com. So X like xylophone, still.com. And you can sign up there for the newsletter. Um, And then of course, like I'll share this, uh, I will share with you the breathwork um, download so people can try breathwork. And if you love it, please reach out on Instagram and or LinkedIn and just let me know if it was helpful for you or like what your experience was like. I would love to get some feedback. Hello, everyone. I'm Dominice Clifton, the founder of Move and Still, a certified breathwork facilitator and a yoga instructor. Thank you so much for trusting me to guide you through a quick breathwork session today. This is going to be a quick three-minute breathwork practice that is focused on finding inner peace. As a quick disclaimer, please don't practice breathwork while pregnant, driving, or in water. Now, we are going to be doing a halo active breath today, which is breathing in through the nose and then exhaling out from the mouth. And so it sounds like this... As we breathe, I will be guiding you and you get to control the pace of the breath so you can speed the breath up and it'll be more activating in your body or you can slow the breath down and it will be more grounding. When you exhale from the mouth, try to take long, slow exhales to really down-regulate the nervous system. So without further ado, go ahead and sit comfortably. You can place the feet flat on the floor. You can place the palms on the lap and just rest your hands. Allow your body to soften. Close the eyes if that feels comfortable or take a soft gaze. And we're gonna start with taking a big breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just continue to breathe at a pace that feels comfortable in your body. As you breathe, know that you are safe and supported and you are held in this moment. And sometimes life can feel overwhelming, like there's too much to manage, or we can be afraid because we feel like we aren't adequate to handle the things that are coming our way. And as we breathe, we are just telling our nervous system, telling our bodies that it is safe. So just allow yourself to inhale in peace and tranquility and exhale out any fear or anxiety that you might be feeling. Continuing to dig deep and trust your body, letting your body release any emotions that it is holding on to that is no longer serving you. Again, breathing in peace. That's it. Keep going. Just allowing yourself to settle to feel safe, to experience your emotions, and just to welcome in more peace, more calm, more trust as you breathe. That's it. Beautiful.
beautiful. <sighs> Affirming to yourself that you are safe in this moment, knowing that you are held, knowing that you are not alone on the journey. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Again, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Taking your last few breaths here. Calling in more inner peace as you inhale and as you release. Beautiful. To close out, we're going to take a hold at the top. So take a big breath in through the nose and hold the breath at the top. Holding the breath for as long as your body wants to hold it and releasing when you are ready to release. Beautiful. And once you release, just allow yourself to feel into the stillness, to feel into the peace. You can release the breath pattern and just breathe naturally. And just allow yourself to stay here for as long as you can in this moment of peace, in this moment of calm. Thank you and have an amazing day. Wait, before you go, make sure you're subscribed to never miss an episode of Thrive. Drop five stars on your way out if you like what you just listened to. And come join the party on Instagram at thrive.podcast to stay inspired and thriving all week long. Thanks for tuning in. It's your time to thrive.